this is the material that we're going to use and this is how we will establish our texel density. So what is the texel density? It's the texture pixel density. It's like how, how, how we establish the resolution and the dimensions of our assets, right? The walls, the props, the whatever, like how are they, how do we decide that they're 10 centimeter, one meter, uh, whatever, so on and so on. How do we scale the texture on it so that it keeps its true value, right? So we have this value here. So this texture, which we could see, well, you know, we can see here, um, is two by two meters, okay? So knowing that, let's go back right here. Let me just easily drag one texture and see this, this one is, this is 4K, but whether it's 2K or 4K, it's two by two meters, okay? So we establish how much detail we want, but you see that they, they are quite big, right? Because if I, I just go with that, like the 4K means that you can zoom and zoom and zoom before you get pixelated, pixelated, sorry, uh, before it gets blurry, like you have a long way to go. Like this is super highly detailed, right? For uh, 2 k is, is half the pixels. So you're gonna zoom, 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 and up, oh, it's pixelated. But here I can actually zoom a whole lot more right so this is the explanation of what resolution is but now about dimensions and the scale and you know the uv scale and all of those things this is extremely important so now we have this texture which is styleable okay and and we'll explore more trim sheets as time goes but for this course we have the use for mainly only tileable textures. And there's many different ways that textures can be tiled. But in order to, like this, this is tileable texture, right? It's 4K by 4K. There we go. But this is one texture. We, we, we want more, right? So we are going to scale it down, right? And we're going to bring it in one quadrant here so now it kind of it doesn't really matter that much that it's 2k or 4k or whatever because this is just for planning right it's like the same thing we did for our modeler kit it's not the final version and this is not what we'll be using inside the engine we are going to create a trim sheet from there okay so i just want to make sure that you know it's going to cover most of our quadrant and it can like it's a little bit not perfectly symmetrical it's okay it's a planning phase it really doesn't matter so i'm gonna drag it behind my grid right and you see it's not like absolutely this is my grid that's a problem by the way of course it's not the the square texture which is perfectly square my grid could have been done uh, more accurately but it, honestly it's always the case it's always a little off and it does not matter. So now what we have is this, which is two meters by two meters, okay? This is the resource that we are dealing with. Now, you have to understand what are we going to do with that? Like, how does it work? What the heck, right? Well, we can go to 3ds Max and you remember that our walls which are going to use like any wall, like they, they, they all, they're all good. The door, the one with window, the one with nothing. Um, they will have a one meter high by three meter long section on which I need to use the stone wall material. Okay, so that is the information. That's, that's the most important information. We have decided to use one by three of this of those assets and this is going to be the material we need so if i leave it there and we have established our trim sheet will be four by four okay that's the maximum we will be going so one by three fits in the four by four right so far so good you guys follow me awesome but now we have one quadrant it's not enough 
because this is two by two, okay? It's not because it's 2K or 4K or 8K, it's two by two, it's half. I cut in half, actually in four total, right? But I cut the length in half. So one quadrant is going to be 2K by 2K now. My trim sheet is showing here 2K by 2K and that won't be enough. So I will actually use two quadrant and for a quick quick little trick in Photoshop, you hold Control Alt, you select your layer and you just move it, right? So now I'm trying to, and you see it, it it's trying to, it's, it's doing a good job. It aligned it perfectly. So now you see this is tileable, right? Because it's going to repeat the pattern and it's going to be used. I will be able to use it and you know, do all my assets and it's going to repeat. Eventually we will be able to tell that, ah, this is repeating. This is the nature of tileable textures. There are techniques to break that, don't worry. But we need it to be tileable. Okay, so let me just show you what, what's happening when I use Control Alt and left click and I drag, it creates a new layer. So what I wanna do is select both and I think I can do Control E to merge. So now we have one, okay? All good. So you remember in 3D, uh, sorry, in Unreal Engine, we have this information two by two, two meters by two meters. So now we have two meters here by two meters here times two, right? So we have two meters and two meters, so that's four. And here is two meters. So the section that I allow, that I, not that I allow, but that I uh, use for this material is four by two. And I'm gonna write down the, 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 the numbers and everything, all right? So with four by two, is it gonna work? The answer is yes, because my assets are so far, none of them are more than four, right? So they are actually three, okay? So we could even have gone with four, but this, this was not working with our, um, with our guidelines, which, which were from our references. Uh, but in some cases, the walls will be four by three. Usually the height is three, unless noted otherwise, but especially for a small house, three meters is more than enough. And then the, the length is really up to us. We could have gone with four and like to be completely honest, it would have been easier because on the horizontal, we ju would just have, like we would have had a much easier time doing the unwraps. You'll see we'll have to do some kind of calculation and some kind of uh, a bit more work when we will be working the unwraps, but it's not gonna be hard. Okay, so four by two is going to work. And therefore, having established those, the assets, the texture, and our trim sheet, we can establish and we kind of get our answer of what is the texel density. It is one meter. Let me actually write it down on a layer right here. I'm gonna draw and I draw horribly with the mouse. It's very difficult. Uh, so let me just put here 4K. I have a tablet, a graphic tablet, which I really like to use, but now it's not connected, so bear with me. So this is 4K, and here is 2K. And of course, here is 2K. I'd rather write down the obvious stuff so that it's absolutely clear. And of course, here is the same, right? 2K and 2K. All right, so now that we have done all of that calculation. Our texel density, it's gonna be difficult to write words. I'm sorry about it, but you know, hopefully you can read. So texel density, for short, it's TD, okay? So uh, eventually I'm gonna write just TD and it's gonna be much easier. I'm doing my best, but I really have no talent to write with a mouse, but this is really ridiculous. I'm, I'm really sorry about that, but the goal is just for you to understand. So 
the pixel density is one meter equals 10, 24, or 1K, right? Because you understand that 2K is 2048 and 4K is 4096, right? It, this is the exact number, but for short, we call it 1K, 2K, 4K. That's just to make sure everybody's on board. So this is our text uh, density. And you should have heard about it. Um, I'll be frank, in school, a lot of graduate, a lot of artists, some very talented and, and, and they know what they're doing, but Texel Density is like, yeah, I kind of heard about it and, and it is the most important thing. Because whatever we do as video game artists, it's extremely technical and it has to follow extremely strict guidelines. So it's not just about talent and like a good sense for artistic combination and like talent is good, but it's frankly, 1% of the job. Like talent will help, right? You might have like an amazing portfolio. Your personal projects might be really, really cool to look at, but you might also never get a job. I'm sorry, I've seen it. I'm not gonna name anyone, but that's the tragic reality. A video game artist is someone who has a very strong technical understanding and grasp of what's going on in the engine, and with with what you're doing right with with what's going on with the textures with the streaming with all of those things the shaders and i i'm not saying this to scare you away I'm, i i hope it actually does the opposite that it gets you more interested because you know essentially this is accessible for anyone like if you are curious and you do the reading you do your homeworks and you dig uh you will get that understanding 